watch, movement, wheel train together. Everything is working well. And by the way, I'm JD and welcome to my channel and thanks for subscribing. Hit like if you can. Um, it helps with my views. It helps to spread the word. Spread the word. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. How do you feel, champ? Do you feel 100%? Feel 1000%, which is way more than 100%. Way more. So what do I got left here? I've got this jobby doohickey left. So this is the balance. This is the heart of the pocket watch. This is a Hamilton Lancaster pocket watch. And this is the balance. So I want to take this balance apart. And I want to get it the inside here. And I want to oil that bugger. So what I'm going to do is, 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 I'm going to remove these two screws here. Which is going to let me very carefully um, remove the balance. So this could be tricky, very tricky. But this is what I'm planning on doing. I've got, ladies and gentlemen, I have liftoff. I don't have to take these screws all the way out because the balance will just, the, the stud will just slide sideways and then summarily dump the balance. So let me see if I can do that very carefully Let's see what where, where is that stud where is this is what they used to say to me when i was younger where is that stud it should be loose right now so i'm gonna have to just turn it over like this and have another look at it i'm doing this under the camera the duress of camera filming so i'm gonna put my thumb or my finger on top here as i kind of Go in here with my tweezers and see if I can just move that stud out. It seems to want to just stay where it is. I may, in fact, oh, there it is. So now the stud just popped out, as you can see right there. So the stud just popped out, and that removed the, uh, the balance cock from the hairspring. This hairspring looks it's blue this looks like an anti-magnetic anti-everything hairspring it's it's gorgeous actually it's a blue hairspring i've never seen a blue hairspring like that before let me get a close-up of that hairspring look at that that is one nice hairspring and it's clean as crap so that's a nice clean as crap hairspring and what i want to do here is i need to get at this balance i'm going to have a i'm going to look at this jewel as well under the microscope because it looks a little bit ratty and if it's too ratty i may need to do the replacement of the jewel which is a real painful exercise folks sometimes it's not ratty and sometimes it's just dirty and rotico unratties it and then sometimes it's just ratty that's all there is to it so what you have to do is pay attention to the to these two little tiny metal forks here right because those are the regulation pins and if you bend the regulation pins you're screwed it's as simple as i can say it so you bend the regulation pins you're screwed so what i do is i put the the balance down on the block like that and then i can remove the screws here i think a black screwdriver should do so i'm going to move my camera up just a bit more so so it gives me a better, a little bit of better angle, and I'm, I'm paying attention to the regulation pins. And that screwdriver is too big. We see black. The next one is yellow, right? Okay. They're all color coded. So black, then yellow. So that's yellow. I gotta keep slipping like this. The reason I'm slipping is because I'm filming, and when you film, you can't. It's hard to get right underneath the work if you're trying to do a close-up. Give me a close-up. And I'm trying to give you folks a close-up so you can learn. I'm putting these screws on the mat far away. They're kind of over there. So I'm putting that far away. And I'm putting this here. I built this, by the way, which I think is pretty cool. So I made that. One day I was inspired. I said, I should make something like this. So I'm going to try to wedge this up to see if I can get this out. Uh, I need a smaller screwdriver to do that. I think we're going to go for the P1000 
pink or whatever this is. It's the world's smallest screwdriver. And I'm just going to see if this comes up. I don't think it will. I'm going to have to push this baby out. So one thing I'm going to do is score it just ever so slightly so I know which side is which side. That is the world's smallest score, folks. And now I should just be able to push this out the back. The back. And I think I need to shave my... Uh, I need to shave my erotica or my uh, pegwood down so it actually fits in the hole here. The other thing I can do is get out a, uh, a stake, a very small rounded stake. And, but it's got to have, it's got to be conic like this one. It's got to be like a cone. And that way when you push, just throw it at the watch, why don't you? That way when you push down on it, it doesn't get interfere, it doesn't interfere with anything. So. That is barely fitting. <laughs> yeah, that's not fitting. That is not fitting, folks. It's unfit for service. Yeah, I gotta have to get a smaller one of these. So I'll be back in a second. So I can't find a stake that's the right size. So what I'm gonna do is shave a little bit of material off of that piece of pegwood on the end so I can use it to push the jewel out. Forgot to hit record. Ta-da! <laughs> so I just shaved the wood out just a bit so it would push the jewel out, which is what I wanted to do. So it pushed the jewel out without any problem. Everything is fine. I just put it over the hole and bam! Jewel came out. There's the jewel on the bottom. So now I can have a very close look and examine these jewels to make sure that they're fine. I think I just have to clean the mud off the, uh, off the cap jewel, which should be fine. But then I want to examine the condition of that other jewel to make sure I don't need to uh, re-jewel it in any way. So I might need to, which is sometimes painful, but necessary. So that's nice and clean. So that's the cap jewel, right? We just radico the dust off of it and show you what I got. There's the cap jewel, nice and clean. See how shiny that is? Look at that. There's the angle you want. So that's where the center pivot would hit. That's clean as heck. Now I want to move that out of the way. So I'm going to put that in the jar, in the, the jar right here. So I know I'm not going to upside down so it doesn't get dirty. And now I'm going to have a look at this, this jewel here. I'm hoping the setting is good because they're hard to find. I'm telling you, they're hard to find. Yeah, it might be okay. Let me look and see. I need to throw this one. I need to clean this one also in alcohol. Oh my God, here we go again. All right, I said alcohol, but I meant lighter fluid. Danger. Danger, Will. Danger. So the same as I did last time. Just put that baby inside. And I need to put a little bit of lighter fluid in there. And just a bit. A tad of lighter fluid doesn't need to be a lot like that and just toss that jewel in and let it let it rinse for a while so just take that setting and let it rinse so hopefully I don't have to replace that setting because that's that those are small settings I do have a lot of replacement settings but they're not easy to find and um, and <clears throat> but you don't want to have the, the setting ruining the watch so if I look at this watch and I look at the uh, the pivots look f pretty friggin' good, so there's no problem with the pivot. Which might be a good indicator that the setting is okay, because if the pivot was was all scored, then the setting was obviously no not very good. So, so that's nice. That's a good indicator. So we're just gonna clean that up, let it rest, and clean it. All right, same as I did the last time. Get in nice and close here. It's amazing the way the uh, the uh, lighter fluid works. Lighter fluid does not loosen shellac, by the way, because if you're doing wor watch work and you're worried about the shellac loosening, you don't have to worry. Oh, I just saw the hole and it looks really nice. I think it was just dirty as shit, so it needed to be cleaned. i got to not swear on these things, the S word. What am I doing using the S word? It's terrible. I've seen a lot of videos, a lot worse than that though, so 
So that's nice right there. I'll put this brush back and not light up any cigarettes. Do not light cigarettes. Now I want to take this and grab it and then put it. Not a lot of room. I'm running out of room. Grab it and put it on that. Just throw it. I'm not going to throw this all over my uh, desk like I did last time. I just wanted to show you that this evaporates really quickly. There's no need to put this amount back into the lighter fluid. I could take a match and light it up and see what happens. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's just going to go woof. And then something else will happen. i got to not do stuff like that. That would be a terrible experiment. I just, it's not a lot of lighter fluid. I think when I was a, a kid, we used to pour it on our gloves and then walk around like a person on fire. So, and then our father, my father never caught me. So, so it was, uh, it would just burn off basically, right? That looks, that jewel looks pretty good now. Look at that. That is spanky clean, folks. That is spanky clean. That looks really nice. I'm not sure if I can show you that, but I can just do this, and you can see it, right? There's the hole. So that looks really nice. It doesn't look like there's jitters on that hole. It doesn't look like the teeth from one of those aliens in the alien movies, which is sometimes they end up looking that way. It's not good. And now I'm going to, while this is drying out some more, I'm just going to erotico inside the hole here. And this is just grabbing any of that leftover pegwood that I put in there that might be still stuck in here. Because I want to install the jewel. And while I install the jewel, I want to make sure that I don't bend those regulation pins, the regulator pins. Because that would be a disaster. So just turn that like that. Find a the hole I can put this in where the regular pins are safe, right? And turn that around. If you're going to do watch work, you're going to have to learn to use your screwdrivers. Because the screwdriver, sorry, your tweezers, because you're going to have to manipulate your tweezers in a way that they're not. Is that going to go in nicely for me, or am I gonna, is it going to be a pain in the butt? No, that sunk in nicely. There we go all the way down let me have a look on the other side and here what you do just get up close again see there you go what you do is look on the edges here and make sure that you don't see any gaps on the edges between the jewel setting and the balance cock because if there's any edges showing that means the jewel setting is not all the way down and if the jewel setting is not all the way down then it won't serve its purpose All right, now we got to put a little bit of oil on there. Just a little bit on the top here. Now, sometimes I've seen watchmakers put oil on the cap and then flip the cap around. I do that too, but on this with this watch here, if there's too much, I think time, real estate, whatever it is, sometimes it's very difficult to get that back on with, with water, or sorry, with oil on the cap. And so I find it a little easier to do it this way. So now I just have to line up that score, which I can see right there. That's the witness mark. And they use witness mark uh, when they're doing work on aircraft. All right, so that turned around. So now we got to turn it around like that. I've got to kind of shift it around the other way a bit. Like that. Then I gotta pick it up. Turn it around. And look where is that witness mark? It's right there. And then drop it in, hopefully. And I may have to go off camera for this because I'll be farting around with it. And you guys will get bored with me trying to get this in while I'm on camera. And often it's easier to do with the microscope, with the, uh, with my, uh, very high powered microscope because I can't fart with it this much.
There we go. I kind of got it sort of in lined up. I just need to. So it's a bit off now. And the only way to get it to get on again is to use a, a screwdriver and tap it. And you got to keep making sure that the the uh, the regular pins are not going to be compromised. Well, there we go. I think we're good right there. Let me push that down. I'm going to get the uh, the shtick. Make sure again the regular pins are out of the way. And I can push that straight down. And the witness mark, as you can see, I'll bring this up. And you can see that the witness mark I have is perfectly lined up with the uh, where it's supposed to be. And this is flat. I look at it like that, and it's flat down, which means the the, it's also down on the other side, so which is good now. I just have to reinstall it and away we go Now to do the insulation over on the with the stereo microscope because it's a lot easier to flip this around and then Install it properly and then tighten it. It's and then trying to do it like this. So I'll see you in a second As I was saying, I'm going to use the stereo microscope, which is quite the tool to actually put the regulator back together, but I kind of can't film it but I think it's not a difficult job so just imagine what I'm doing okay all right because the stud of the regulator is actually under the arm of the balance I haven't got I've got no visibility into being able to just insert that stud into the stud holding or locking mechanism on the balance cock. So what I'm going to do is go down low and try to lift that into place. It's, this might not work um, and who knows what's going to happen. But the, It's the only way I think I can do this. So i got to lift this whole thing up, put it on a box of some sort so I can work on it at eye level and then just lift that up and put it into place. I'm going to try this out and I bet you any money it's not going to work. <laughs> what, what the heck, right? Just going to grab the hairspring stud and move it up to where it's being held and just shove it into the hole. And it worked. <laughs> but I still have to get the hairspring to ride inside the uh, regulator pins. So I'm just going to turn this around a bit. And I think all I need to do is dip it down a bit, but I don't want to bend it. So if I just dip it down, or push it over just a bit, like that, will that work? It seems to be in the right place right now. I need to get a very, very small screwdriver. And I try not to hit this box as I'm doing it, because this is just crazy watch work move it like this and I need to put a little pressure on the on the balance cock as I go like this and then push the hairspring up so that worked and now I need to tighten those screws on the top without moving anything so and the only way for me to do that is to move this whole box around very carefully now normally, a normal watchmaker would cut away, so <laughs> I think I think I will put this down on the ground and work it from it on the ground because it's going to fall off. Alright, so it's on the ground. I've got the screws. I need to tighten these screws. I'm looking down, I'm seeing two screws sitting there that are from something else. <laughs> I hope they're not from some, the stud. So I'm just going to put my finger on the top here. And I'm going to very carefully tighten these screws. I apologize if you can't see what I'm doing because the angle might be wrong.
trying not to breathe right now. That should do. Let me look at that. Yeah, it's in there. Let me look. Let me show you what I got here. There we go there. So the stud's in there and it's tightened down. And the hairspring is riding between the regulator pins. So that was that what I would call success. Now what I'm concerned with right now is there's two little screws here, right? And did I forget to put these somewhere? Because I think that they probably belong on the back end of this movement, right? So, which is probably a, a good thing. If I turn that around and I look at this movement, are there two little screws missing? And the answer is no. So they're not from there and they're not from the top. Where the heck did these two little screws come from? What the heck is going on here? Oh, I know where they came from. They came from the top of here, the jewel setting. So I need to replace those screws now on top of the jewel setting. I got all screwed up by too many little screws. So now I just need to take this, we just bend that down a bit here, give you a decent angle here. And I need to just replace these two screws on the top. So that should not be a problem. And I need to put a little bit of pressure on the top here again. And turn those around. And I got pretty darn sure that I got grandchildren showing up really soon. So I'm trying to get this together before they say, Hey, Grandpa, what are you doing? I'm like, oh my God, you just screwed everything up. Hey, that didn't work. I may have to do this outside of the camera here. I'm try my black screwdriver. I need to get in super close here. All right, so that one's in. And then the next one is just as hard as the last one. I just have to throw this down on the carpet here. And the problem is I got a shitty angle here and my hip is hurting, so. Because I'm leaning forward big time. Oh my God, this is pissing me off. I'm not comfortable at all in this position. I need to get a proper watchmaker's bench, by the way. That is the future procurement. That way I've got my elbows on the pads and I can't harm myself. There we go. Both screws are in. The balance is in. And if I put this balance in the watch and it starts ticking, then we're good to go. We're good as gold, Jerry. All right, so grab the balance and be prepared to install it. And let's pray for some ticking, folks. So I just put a small wind on this watch. So I'm going to enter the balance from this side and come this way, I think. Or, yeah, that's a, that'll be a good way to do it. In some cases here with these watches, you can get the... Uh, balance will get snagged up on the hair... On the, uh, center wheel. So just get everything out of the way. Turn the balance around like that. And now I want to put that in like this. Hope you can see what's going on right now. And I just turn that like this and then drop that in place. And I always keep my finger on the outside just in case this, the balance wants to take off on me. right? All right, that looks pretty shitty right now, so I don't know if I want to continue with this. Just lift that back up again. Pull it out. Make sure the pallet fork is on the correct side, which it isn't. Like that. Enter it in again, nice and easy. Like that. Hopefully it's in where the hole is. Rotate it around. Sorry about putting my finger in the way there. 
and then oh, we got a little bit of action there so that's always good I think I'm good I just have to screw this in now make sure you don't crush the pallet fork right I don't have much of a wind on this thing either so so I'm not super concerned yet the grandchildren will be here soon I think oh I can see that see the hairspring on top of the center wheel there we go That hairspring cannot ride on the center wheel or you got problems. I'm just tightening it slowly to make sure nothing gets compressed. And this thing is not, um, the watch is, uh, is now working. So I'm going to get my bench key out here and give it a little bit of a wind. Uh, the good news is I've got, I've got it working, which is excellent. It's not working like super strong yet, but I also didn't wind it, so I just wound it, wound it with the screw. So, see, that's not the right bench key. That's not the right bench key. That might be the right bench key there. Let's put a good wind on it here. And there it goes, folks. That is a 17 joule Lancaster movement, and it is working. It's working nicely, actually. So we're going to let this run overnight. And what I do normally is I put a lid on it. I put one of these lids on it and just let it sit in the, the Myers number 56 movement holder. So I just let it sit there and then join my family. And that is what I would call success. So thanks a lot for watching my channel. Thanks for watching this particular video. It's a toughie, but it's the fourth one. I haven't cased it yet, but this is the hard part, not the casing. So we'll just end now and and we'll uh, put the rest of it back together later. Thanks a lot. I'll let this run like this overnight and I'll do the rest of the uh, casing tomorrow. So thanks a lot, JD here. Really appreciate your support. All right, JD here again. This thing is ticking away with exceptional amplitude let me get this eyepiece out of the way oh my god this is pissing me off so there it is the watch is done and dusted i'm going to show you a slow-mo of the amplitude right now because it's super impressive here you go there is the amplitude and you can just count the swing yourself and that is impressive it's another 90 degrees past 360 degrees so this has been a very big success i think so the watch is done and we're just going to let this run overnight and we're going to try to regulate it um, and do what we need to do. Hopefully the bead error is decent and I don't have to fart with the bead error because I really don't want to because it's running so nicely right now. So thanks a lot, JD. Again, thanks for watching my channel. Thanks for supporting my channel. And this was a good watch to go through. Thanks a lot.